if you imagine you have a job as a, a checkout person in a grocery store, you know, it's a fairly unskilled job. You can be a, some miserable, resentful, horrid bastard doing that job, boy. You know, you can come in there just exuding resentment and bitterness and making mistakes and making sure that every customer that passes by you has a slightly worse day than they need to, right? And, and you know, pilfering time and perhaps pilfering goods and being resentful about the people who gave you the position because they're above you in the dominance hierarchy and talking, you know, bad things, gossiping behind the back of your co-workers. It's like you can take your menial position and turn that into a very nice little slice of hell. That's for sure. And, you know, you go into places like that. I always think of the archetypal diner in that way. You know, this is the opposite diner I'm thinking about. So you go into a diner, right? It's 7 o'clock in the morning and you order some bacon and eggs and some toast. And, and then you look around in the diner and you think, it was like 1975 when the windows were last washed and there's this kind of thick coating of who gives a damn grease on the on the walls you know and and the floor too has got that sort of stickiness that you really have to work at to develop over years you know and the waitress is she's not happy to be there and the guy behind the counter isn't happy that that happens to be the waitress that he's working with and then you know you walk down the stairs maybe to the washroom and that's its own little trip and so you come back and you order your damn eggs and you order your toast and you order your bacon and then it comes and like the eggs are too cooked on the bottom so they're kind of brown and then they're kind of raw on top and and they're cold in the middle which is you really have to work to cook an egg like that man but you can master that with like 10 years of bitterness you teach you how to cook an egg like that and then the toast here's what you do with the toast right you put <laughs> You take, you, you take the white bread, you know, the pre-sliced stuff that no one should ever eat. And then you put that in the toaster and you overcook it. And then you wait and then you pop it out of the toaster. And then because it's overcooked, you scrape it off. <laughs> and you knock off the crumbs so it doesn't look too burnt. And then you wait till it's cold. And then you put cold margarine on it because if you put cold margarine, first of all, not butter, but if you put cold margarine on it, you can also kind of tear holes in it so that then it has lumps of margarine in it and it's really dry except where it's too greasy. So that's like its own little work of art, man. And then you put that on the side with the, with the eggs and then you have the potatoes and this is how you cook the potatoes properly. <laughs> yeah. You know, so they're leftover potatoes. And you keep dumping new leftover potatoes into the old leftover potatoes over weeks. And so some of the potatoes have, they're no longer potatoes, right? <laughs> They've half returned to Mother Earth. <laughs> then you flap them on the grill and you sort of, I don't know, you burn them a bit, I guess. And then you slap them on the plate and Jesus, you don't want to eat those, man. <laughs> that's for sure. And that's the point. And then... You have the bacon, and you want to make sure you buy the lowest possible quality bacon. That, that's, that's how you start. And then you throw it on the grill, and you don't, your grill has to be overheated to do this. You have to cook the bacon so that it's raw in places and burnt in other places. And it has that delightful pig-like odor that only really cheap, badly cooked bacon can provide. Or maybe you use those little breakfast sausages that no one in their bloody right mind would let within 15 feet of anything living, you know. And then you serve that, right? And you serve it with the kind of orange juice that is only orange in color. <laughs> and, and with coffee that's... Ah, uh, what would you say? It was started too early in the morning. That's the first thing. Pe bad quality coffee started too early in the morning, r got cold once or twice and has been reheated. And then you serve that with whitener. <laughs> it's like, here's your breakfast. It's like, no, man, that's not breakfast. That's hell. <laughs> you know? And, and you created it. And then what you do, if you have a diner like that, is because you have a miserable life if you have a diner like that, and you've really worked on achieving that, is every night you go home and you curse your wife and you curse your kids and you fucking well curse God too for producing a universe where a diner like yours is allowed to exist. And that's your bloody life. So, 
Well, so that's what God's trying to point out here is... <laughs> I know there is some data showing that in counties in the U.S. where marijuana has been legalized, the overuse of, of opiates for pain has decreased substantially. Awesome. And the crime rates have gone down, interesting. Well, sto people yeah. stoned on pot. It's like Dude, it's hard to pick somebody's break, pocket. Yeah. You go break into a building? Yeah, yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're they, just not going to get it together. You to might knock that. for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. you might knock at the front door. Yeah, I don't think yeah. you're going to break in. And though. you're not going to, yeah, you might, that's right, you might knock. You're not going to go out, what are you going to go out the alley and have a fight? <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> a so, real slow fight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. right. Well, you're watching your hands, like yeah. So it's like chess with your hands. Exactly, exactly. That's not going to happen. So, who's your favorite comedian? John Cleese. Theo Vaughn's pretty damn funny. <laughs> Rogan's pretty funny too. But I really have a deep fondness for the Monty Python types, man. Who will win a bar fight between Ben Shapiro and Sam Harris? Shapiro's pretty sneaky, <laughs> <laughs> and he's quick. Uh, I don't know. There'd be blood and feathers everywhere, I suspect, in that fight. <laughs> I think I'd bet on Ben. What's a random stat of your life you would want to know? Oh, oh, oh. Ha. Percentage of radical liberals who have me as a guilty pleasure. 